and we're back. What? How to design a fitness program with acute variables. Um, now you may be thinking to yourself, wait a second, I didn't sign on for this. There are no acute variables in the syllabus. And you are correct. Um, here's the thing though. If without understanding the acute variables, call them what you want, um, things you need to know, stuffs, um, there's no way you can talk about designing an effective training program. So here we go, so quick, ripping off a band-aid. Okay, key principles of program design. Progression, overload, specificity, reversibility, variety, and periodization. For the part about overload with the intensity and volume, that is what you need the acute variables for. You can't possibly talk about intensity and volume without knowing your acute variables. Let's find those variables. Wait, what? Oh, here they are. <laughs> okay, so the acute variables are what we're going to use in order to do overload, right? So you're um, basically saying that in order to improve, you have to continually work harder, right? And this is really cool. It's called the Davies principle, right? Is that your body is going to adapt to its stressor, right? And the, the healing is going to occur along the line that the stress occurs. Now, what healing am I talking about? It's not like healing from a cut. Um, it's kind of saying like, well, when I do bicep curls, I'm making micro tears in my bicep muscle. Um, and when I do that, my muscle then rebuilds. So as my muscle rebuilds and rebuilds and rebuilds, it's kind of like putting more and more cement um, upon little cracks. Eventually you have a blob of cement, um, right? Except this time it's like a blob of muscle mass, which is less, less blob-like in nature. Okay. Um, exercise programs are manipulated using the following variables. These are your acute variables, but you don't have to call them that. Repetitions, reps, one complete movement of a single exercise, right? So if I am doing bicep curls and I do 10 reps, right? I'm lifting the, um, the weight in a curl like fashion 10 times sets. This is a group of your, um, consecutive repetitions. So like maybe I'll do three sets of 10 bicep curls, right? 30 altogether, right? But often there's a little rest period in between your sets, which is very nice. Um, what you want to understand is that the more sets you have, the lower the repetitions are going to be, um, right? So if you are doing, let's say six or seven different sets, um, which is something that like a bodybuilder would do, for example, then you're going to have lower reps. If you are looking at like a general fitness, a cardio program, a weight loss program, you're going to have fewer sets, but more reps. Um, and it just helps the body to adapt in different ways. Okay. So tempo, um, is going to be is going to be addressed sort of um, indirectly by the IB. So you'll notice you don't see the word tempo, but they talk about like the speed at which you're performing um, certain moves and doing certain exercises. Um, so an example of this, like the speed at which the rep is performed, is um, concentric, eccentric, and isometric holds. Right. So if I'm doing a uh, weight, let's go back with the bicep curl, right? Oh, I don't have any weights. We'll pretend that this pen is my weight, right? So as I'm going down and essentially my hand is pushing up against gravity slowly to bring the weight down, that's eccentric, it's called working the negative, right? When I come back up, that's my concentric motion. And in between my eccentric and my concentric motions, right? I'm gonna have something called an isometric hold. Um, ISO meaning it, it's not moving, it's an isolated hold. So I'll hold my weight in one position. And if you're doing something like bar legs, for example, um, the isometric holds in there are absolutely vicious um, because you'll hold um, a dumbbell or something like that or a kettlebell and you'll hold it in a squat for several seconds, right? An isometric hold. Um, so your muscles never get a chance to rest. Um, which is great, except it hurts. Okay, so um, rest intervals, this actually changes pretty dramatically depending on what the goal is. Um, if your goal is weight loss, your reps, your rest intervals are, are pretty minimal. Um, if you're doing for like 
uh, max repetitions, like a weightlifter, and they're working on getting their max bench press, your rest periods could be as long as three to five minutes. Um, so those are some things that you want to consider when you're looking at a training program um, and you're looking at designing one that's specific, right? Because you wouldn't give um, a bodybuilder jumping jacks, right? Um, and you wouldn't give somebody who's interested in weight loss doing um, a whole bunch of sets with very few reps and very heavy weights. All right. So here is an interesting comparison chart. Um, so when I'm talking about muscular endurance and stabilization, I'm talking about people who are like getting into exercise, working on developing um, cardiorespiratory fitness, things like that. So we're not talking about like hardcore at the gym. Um, so you're looking at like, you can see that the number of reps from the stabilization phase goes down pretty significantly um, as you get to max strength, right? And power is a little bit different. Those are like explosive jumpy moves. Um, and so they have, they kind of follow a different rule book, right? But you can see how the sets and the reps progress. Are you gonna need to memorize these tables for the IB? No. What the reason why you're seeing it is because um, if you don't, oh, look, I have a, what is happening? Okay, um, so the reason why you're seeing it um, is because I want you to really, really understand that these are the variables that are going to change when you are switching up your program, making it harder, um, progressing, regressing, whatever the case may be. Overload continues. Okay, so all of these things fall under the umbrella of overload, um, which is kind of great because if it asks you, if the IB asks you to outline overload, right, um, you get to mention all of these things, which means it takes up a lot of room, which means you get to say a lot of stuff. Yay, right? So outlining overload, you would have to talk about intensity, volume, frequency, duration, and exercise selection. So many things. Okay, so training intensity versus training volume. Volume is the total amount of work performed within a specified time. Um, this is cumulative. So this is talking about like, how much work are you performing during a week, a week's worth of exercise, right? So if you have a high volume, you're going to the gym every day, your intensity is going to be lower. Um, so that means an individual's level of effort compared with their maximum effort as a percentage is your training intensity. And you'll see it as a percentage, right? So you'll see that um, people are training at different percentages of their max on different days. You certainly would not want to see a training program in which you're working to, you know, 85% of your effort every day because that is going to lead pretty quickly to exhaustion and then injury. That's overtraining. That's bad news. Um, so intensity is the number of sets and reps and tempo and rest periods in the individual workout, whereas volume is sort of like, well, how much are you doing, right? How long are you spending doing these sets and rest, reps and things like that? Um, this goes to both your weekly program as well as like, are you working out for an hour or 90 minutes? Because um, really after 60 minutes, you start to like, uh, like mm -mm, there's no point. Um, you're gonna you're gonna burn yourself out. Okay, volume is always inversely related to intensity. High volume, low intensity. High intensity, low volume. Um, you can't safely perform high volumes with high intensity. That's a poor choice. Um, so we got that covered. Um, high volume. This is what you look at for hypertrophy and fat loss. Um, and then with high intensity, you're looking at um, max strength and power adaptations, in which case you will be visiting the gym less often, but when you do, you're gonna feel like you want to. But okay, um, training frequency and duration. So the number of training sessions performed during a specified period, usually a week, that is your frequency. So frequency, I work out four times a week, six times a week, never seven times a week, because I'll be mad at you, don't do that, burnout. Um, training duration, oh look, has, ah, has two meanings. Um, so the time frame from the start to the finish of the workout, right? 30 minutes, hour, whatever. Um, and the length of time that you're gonna be in that phase of training. 
right? So what do I mean by phase of training? I mean that your training is going to change up about every four weeks because remember we learned about um, resistance adaptations, right? And your body's going to get used to it. So about every four weeks when your body's like, hey, this is getting easy, then you're going to step it up a notch. Um, so training duration is a function of the number of reps and sets and exercises. So if you've got a lot of reps and and things like that, and the end exercise is really intense, your training duration is going to be a little bit lower, right? You're not gonna do hardcore cardio for 90 minutes. Um, exercise, so um, workouts that do tend to be a little bit longer um, are weightlifting exercises. And usually when you're going for like a max thing like that, like one rep max, um, because the uh, rest periods are so long in between. So like sometimes up to five minutes. Frequency growth, so close, so close. I know it's been over 10 minutes. This is the worst, but you're you're gonna you're gonna make it. You're gonna make it. Okay. Frequency, right? Oh, I already said that. Oh, this is just an example. Look so fast, so fast. You can even check this out on your own because I'm literally using the same PowerPoint slide to post it for like a week. Um, so it's like leg day, yay. Okay, you get it. Exercise selection, um, choosing the appropriate exercises for what the desired adaptation is. Right? You're not going to choose the same exercise, like I said already, for a bodybuilder as you would for somebody who is um, looking to increase their endurance in running or looking to lose weight. Ooh, wait, specificity. I feel like now we're in a different thing. Hold on, you may be lucky. Oh, no, we're still in the same thing, but we're going to take a break because um, that's a lot of me talking and then I'll make another video on the other four. But you made it. You made it through the big ones. Yes. Good job. Good job.